Hey everyone, we're going to talk about literal equations, which are basically equations without any numbers. And these tend to show up very often um, in AP Physics, um, specifically on um, AP Physics exams. Now we've only had one exam for AP Physics 1 and 2, um, and yes, there were definitely literal equations on there, um, and they were very um, common in AP Physics B. So it's important that we're able um, to really, I guess, kind of speak the language here of mathematics and really get comfortable without using numbers. I know from experience that my students prefer when there's numbers in the problem, but that's not always going to be the case. So let's take a look at how we can uh, start to get used to this idea. You remember from math class PEMDAS, right? Or please excuse my dear Aunt Sally or some other, you know, crazy thing um, that math teachers say in order to help students remember the conventional order of operations. And this means that you should do what, what you need to do, parentheses first, then the exponents, multiplication and division left to right, addition and subtraction from left to right, when you're trying to solve for a specific variable. For us, what if we have uh, mostly variables, um, or in this case, I gave you two variables, um, and there's no expectation for us to solve by substitution or anything like that, um, but just kind of show me how you would solve for y here. So if you need to pause um, the video, please go ahead and do that, and just think to yourself, how would I solve for y here? So I'm just going to rewrite the equation here. Now, I say on the top here, meet sad map, right? I mean, it's PEMDAS backwards. But if we're trying to isolate some variable, in this case, y, right? If we want to get y by itself, then we end up kind of doing PEMDAS in reverse. At this point, I have 4y divided by 3 minus 20. The first thing I can do here is simplify the denominator. So if I know 3 minus 20, I have 4y over negative 17. The next thing I want to take care of is I want to get 4y isolated, right? So in order to do that, I could multiply both sides by negative 17. If I do this, I end up with 4y on the right, and on the left here, I have 2 times negative 17. Okay, so I'm basically distributing this 17 here. Um, so I end up with, what is that, negative 20, negative 34x minus 5 times 17, which would be 50, and then 5 times 7 is 35, what is that, negative 85? Okay, again, trying to get y by itself, still with this 4, which is being multiplied by the 4, so I'm going to divide each side by 4. And you end up with y is equal to negative 34x minus 85 all over 4. So a quick little warm-up here to get us ready for some literal equations. I gave you a few numbers um, in here, but this is what you should have had for your answer. Uh, what if your variable is trapped? So what if the unknown that you need is a grouped expression? It's part of something that's inside some parentheses. Well, we're going to simply use the distributive property to expand the expression out. So again, it's all math that you've already seen before, just maybe not with this many variables. So this is an actual physics equation um, that we'll actually derive together um, when we meet each other here in the fall. And um, this is a great example of a literal equation where you pretty much have mostly variables. I see this whole number 2 here, but we have mostly variables. And we're asked to solve for this x with this little subscript 0. In physics, Sometimes we have variables and then we have subscripts, and the subscripts help with the naming of the variable. So there's no mathematics involved with these subscripts at all, it's just part of the name. 
So for example, this X with a subscript 0 stands for initial position, and the X with the subscript F is the final position. And we over here, we have two V's, same deal, V sub 0, V sub F. It's just to show you that they're different, um, they're different quantities, but they are the same physical quantity. These are talking about velocities. These are talking about positions. And then we have another variable here, a. Again, it's not important for you to know the equations yet. We're going to derive them and learn them together in the fall. But I wanted to give you some idea of the math behind literal equations. So it's not important that you know what any of these mean yet, because in plenty of time, um, we will get there. So let's say we have to solve for x sub 0. So we're trying to get this guy over here isolated. The first thing we want to do is we need to kind of get rid of everything around him. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract this uh, v sub 0 squared. So on the left, I end up with vf squared minus vo squared equals 2a times x final minus x initial. And this is one of those things where the variable that we're in search of, x sub 0, is kind of trapped here within the parentheses. So what can we do next? Well, we can distribute this 2a to each component here to um, get rid of these parentheses. So I end up with 2a times xf minus 2a times x sub 0. Again, we're looking for this x sub 0, so I'd like to get him isolated. And in order to do that, I need to subtract 2a times x final from each side. All right, vf squared minus vo squared minus 2a times x final is equal to negative 2a x initial. Again, our main objective here is to get this x initial by itself. So I'm going to be dividing by negative 2a to do that. And then I'm going to divide this side by negative 2a as well. I finally got my x sub 0 here alone. Over here I have vf squared minus vo squared all over negative 2a. Uh, with this over here, this negative 2a and this negative 2a will uh, divide out here. So I would end up with minus x final. And now I have an equation um, for x sub 0. All right, so here's another example for you. Um, again, this is a real physics equation, um, and you don't need to know what the quantities are yet, just that we've got variables here. Sorry about that. I'm still getting used to, still getting used to this system here. Um, so I have A equals F net. So again, F is your variable. Net is just a subscript to, to um, describe it divided by m, and we're trying to solve for f net, so I need to get f net by itself. When I have equations like these, um, a lot of people like to say that they're multiplying each side by m, which is totally possible. Sometimes I like to look at it as I'm going to cross multiply with this equal sign here. It's really the same thing. f net here equals a times m. Okay. Dealing with exponents, um, I know that this part can be a little bit tricky. If the unknown variable is raised to an exponent, such as 2, 3, or 1 half, perform the appropriate operation to raise the unknown variable to the first power. So it has an exponent of 1. So let me show you an example of that. Okay, so imagine we had um, a math equation like this. It's a delta x equals 1 half at squared, and we were asked to solve for t. This is a great example of when we end up having an exponent. We really don't want there, but we need to take care of it. Okay, so I can rewrite this expression as delta x equals at squared over 2. 
right? And this delta x here is really just over 1. And then if I cross multiply here, I could get at squared equals 2 times delta x. I want the t by itself, so now I'm going to divide both sides by a. I'm going to just move over here. Um, I end up with t squared equals 2 delta x over a. And I guess the question I really get often is, okay, I've got this down to my variable squared. How do I get just the variable? Well, t squared is not what I want. What would I need to do to this variable squared to get it to just p the variable here? Well, I would take the square root of this. And if I do that to the left side, I need to do that to the right side as well. So I end up getting t is equal to the square root of 2 times delta x all over a. Okay, another example here is if our variable is kind of trapped underneath the square root sign. You know, what do we do then? Um, this is a real physics equation as well that we're learning in the second half of the year. But again, to manipulate literal equations, it doesn't matter what any of these variables stand for. It's really all about the math here. Um, this is a symbol for period in physics and so it doesn't look like a T, like this to me would be a normal T. The symbol for period kind of has these little uh, lines coming down from it. So this big T, sometimes it's used for temperature. This T over here is the symbol for period. Okay, so let's say we're going to solve for M here. The first thing that I'd like to do is um, I'd like to kind of get the 2 pi out of there. So I'm going to divide each side by 2 pi. All right, so that works. So now I end up with period over 2 pi equals the square root of m over k. And I don't want to have m under the square root sign. Um, I definitely don't want that at all. So the only way to deal with that is to actually square that entire component. And if I square that side, I'm going to have to square this side as well. And I'm just going to write this out longhand just so everybody can kind of see what happens. If you had period over 2 pi multiplied by period over 2 pi, and you had the square root of m over k times the square root of m over k, what do you really end up having? Well, over here, we get period squared, 2 pi times 2 pi gives you 4 pi squared equals square root of m times the square root of m gives you the square root of m squared all over the square root of k squared. So this is going to simplify down to just be m over k. Okay, cool. And now I really want m by itself here, so I'm just going to multiply each side here by k. And if I do that, I get m equal to k times period squared all over 4 pi squared. I hope you found this short tutorial helpful for you uh, as you work on your summer assignment. As always, if you have any questions, please reach out to me by email and I'm happy to help. I hope you're having a great summer and I look forward to meeting you in September.